Hey guys, welcome back to the Destinations channel. I'm Sal Patera and today we're going to talk about some of those things that the cruise lines don't tell you when you book your cruise. Some good, some bad. And I'll be back to tell you all about them right after this. Welcome back to the show and thanks for staying through the intro. As always, if you're new to our channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and click that little bell notification that way YouTube will let you know every time we upload a brand new video. So you've booked your dream vacation and on this one, it's going to be a cruise. Well, there are some things that the cruise lines just don't tell you when you book your cruise. A lot of them are industry secrets and we're gonna talk about them right now. So if you've already booked your cruise, especially on a cruise line's website, this first one you probably already know, and that's your ticket will actually cost you more than they advertise. When you go on that site like Carnival or Royal Caribbean or Princess or almost all of the cruise lines, you're gonna see a, a price for a seven day cruise and you're gonna be, man, that is really cheap. Well, what they don't tell you is what they add on at checkout when you go to actually reserve the cruise and that it doesn't include your port charges or your taxes on that cruise. And the taxes are not only the taxes for your sale price, but actually the taxes that each port charges as well. And that can be a significant part of the ticket. On a lot of cruises, it can be a third or even half the cost of that initial price that they charged you. So while cruise vacations are really cheap, even with those extra charges, keep that in mind when you're looking for a cruise in your budget when you first see the number on their website. Take in mind that most likely that doesn't include those extra charges. The second one we're gonna go over, and this one gets a lot of people really aggravated, so know this in advance before you book your dream vacation. One of the things you're gonna look at is the ship, and the ships are destinations in themselves. There are tons to do on board, but a lot of people are also looking at the ports on where you're gonna be visiting while you're traveling, such as the Caribbean and specific ports within. Keep in mind those ports can and often do change after you've booked your cruise. And there's a lot of reasons for this. It can change before the cruise because the cruise line is looking at time conditions and fuel restraints and realize, hey, we just can't make that port. Or they can even change while you're on your sail and you could be really close to a port and find that there's too much wind to pull in port or the port is closed for whatever reason. And lots of times your ship will have to make alternate destination routes. Now, most of the time your captain will try to find an alternate port for you to go to but it is possible, like on my last cruise, due to mechanical issues of the ship, where we missed our last two ports completely because we had to start heading back to Florida in order to make it back in time. So know that in advance that ports are always flexible. And while we love to visit our favorite ports, it can change after you purchase your ticket. Okay, this next one is kind of morbid. The average cruise ship right now has about five to 6,000 people on board between passengers and crew. People often get sick on board and have to visit the infirmary, and there is a hospital and even a dentist right on board your cruise ship. However, sometimes things can go worse than that. And there is actually a morgue on each cruise ship. I bet you didn't know that while you're up and above having a good time, there could be a body in the drawer at the bottom of the ship. But when you think about it, it's kind of normal. If you had a community anywhere here in the United States with 6,000 people on, in it, well, during the course of eight days, somebody of those 6,000 people, especially when cruising has a lot of older folks on it, can die. And I'm not talking about accidents on board. I'm just talking about natural causes, heart attacks, things of that nature. So yeah, this one's kind of morbid and the cruise ships don't like to advertise it, but there is actually a morgue below the ship. So we talked about how the price of cruising could be a little more than the teaser price that they put you on their website. But did you know that's not where the cruise line makes their money? Yeah, they love to sell tickets because they want every cabin to be sold on board, but where you're really gonna spend the bulk of your money is on board your cruise. That's why they sell drink packages in advance. If not, you're gonna pay drink by drink by drink. You're also gonna gamble on board. You're also gonna buy souvenirs on board and lots of opportunities to spend extra money that you haven't planned for. 
Now keep in mind, you don't have to buy any of those things. With the price of your cruise ticket comes most of your entertainment, tons of great food and lots of things to do on board. I personally know people have gotten on board a cruise ship and never spent a penny and had an absolute fantastic time for the week that they were gone. But if you're one of those people who likes the extras, be prepared to spend some more money. Let's talk about food. There is food everywhere on board the cruise ship from your main dining room to the buffets, to the specialty restaurants, to the 24 hour room service that most cruise lines send you. And there's just tons of food. And every night you're gonna be invited to a four star formal dinner in the main dining room. The portions are somewhat small as you would picture any four star restaurant, but did you know that you can actually order as many of those as you want? They don't advertise it on the menu, but if you wanna try four or five things off the menu, Go ahead, even if they're all main entrees. They're not gonna stop you, they're very used to it. So if you're still hungry or you just wanna try some extra things, don't be afraid to order extra things off the menu. I bet a lot of you know this next one. There are ice cream shops on board most cruise ships now that are going to charge you for ice cream. But did you know almost every ship that leaves from the United States that I know of has free ice cream on board? That's right, there are ice cream machines on most Lido decks right between the pool deck and where you would find the buffets on board. And it's 24 hours a day, you can go there and get your favorite ice cream and many of them also have frozen yogurt. While we're still on the topic of food, for you foodies out there, you know you can preview the night's menu for what's gonna be in the main dining room on almost every ship by visiting just outside the dining room during the course of that day. But here's a secret that they don't tell you. If you're a real foodie and you wanna plan your specialty restaurant around what's going to be in the main dining room, almost every line will let you visit guest services and they will have a copy of the menu for the entire voyage of your cruise that you can go and preview the menu and plan your other eating opportunities around what's going to be there. Let's go back to booking your cruise for a minute. All cruise lines have great opportunities for you to select a fantastic cabin. When you choose your cabin, you wanna make sure that you're choosing it for the optimum for you. For instance, if you're an early sleeper, you may not wanna choose that cabin that's directly above or below the main show lounge because early in the evening, those shows are gonna be going on and they are somewhat loud. Same thing with directly or below the casino. But you also wanna consider things like if you have a balcony cabin, you might wanna be two or three floors at least above things like the nightclub or any areas outside the ship where they're gonna be playing music because you may hear that come in through your balcony doors. So take a look at the entire ship map and look around what's gonna be around you before you select that cabin. Okay, the next one, and a lot of people don't know this, but be prepared to charge on board. And no, I'm not talking about your credit card. Most cruise ships only have one or two power outlets in the entire cabin. So make sure you're prepared for that in the age of electronics where we need lots of things to charge. Bring a power strip on board with you. You're gonna need it. Now here's a caveat. Most cruise ships are not going to allow you to bring a power strip that has surge protection. Now I know that's backwards from what you're gonna use at home, but on board surge protection is a really bad thing. So make sure your power trip does not have surge protection as you bring it on board and allow yourself those extra opportunities to charge your devices. Next, we're gonna talk about shore excursions. And you're gonna find the cruise lines offer great shore excursions directly from your ship. And there's some great benefits on that, which I'm gonna to talk to you about in just a second. But did you know almost every port you're gonna to go to is gonna sell shore excursions at the port once you leave the ship for a fraction of what the cruise line is gonna charge you. And quite simply, the reason why is the cruise line is taking a cut. They're taking a portion of the shore excursions that they sell you, and of course they have to. They have staff and everything, every, all the other expenses that come involved with selling you that product. But one of the big things about buying it from the cruise line, even at a higher price, and this is probably the most important reason, is because God forbid if something were to happen on your shore excursion, your bus were to break down getting back to the ship, 
really there's a, a, an array of things that could happen which could cause your sure excursion to be late getting back to the ship. Well, if you bought that excursion directly through your cruise line and you're late getting back, you're gonna see the cruise ship is still gonna be there waiting for you. Where if you bought that excursion on your own and you get back late, you'll be waving to the pier or be one of those pier runners that are trying to catch that cruise ship as they're pulling away from dock. And I don't wanna see that happen to you because if it does, you're gonna be responsible for either finding your way home or to the next port at your expense. So I strongly recommend, even though there are cheaper excursions at the pier, buy your shore excursions directly from the cruise line. And while we're on that subject, the next one is that people can and often do miss the ship. And I'm not talking about miss the ship on your first day when you're boarding the ship back in Miami or wherever you're cruising from. That does happen as well. But I'm talking about miss the ship in a foreign port. Like I said, unless you're on an official excursion from your cruise line, that ship is not going to wait for you if you're late getting back. And for this reason, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend getting back to your ship at least one hour early prior to the ship's departure time. Always double check the ship's departure time as you're leaving the gangway when you first arrive in that port of call. Also, you're gonna to wanna to double check that your watch is on ship's time. The ship time can often be different than your local port time. So if you ask somebody in port what time it is, they may be very well giving you the wrong time, which could cause you to miss the ship. And again, if that does happen, you're gonna find your way to your next port of call or back to home at your expense. Now, if that does happen, the ship does leave a port agent behind who will help you make those reservations, but ultimately, you're gonna be the one paying for it. And the last thing on this list today is that, believe it or not, even in today's day and age, there are pirates out there in the Caribbean. It's not just a movie. But did you know that your ship is actually prepared to fight off pirates? Now, most cruise lines aren't gonna give you the exact details, but keep in mind that if a pirate were to try to board your ship, it's a big risk for the pirate, because you know, obviously cruise lines have thousands of people on it to fight back. But your ship's personnel is actually trained in fighting off the pirates. Everything from specialty defense devices like sound blasters that are designed to direct sound directly towards another ship, which can even pierce the eardrums, deterring them from coming back, all the way to secret weapons that are on board, God forbid if something were to happen, in order to protect their passengers. But yes, there are pirates of the Caribbean, but you're protected being on board a cruise ship. So that's my list today of some of the things that the cruise lines don't tell you. Do you have additional things that the cruise lines don't tell you that you know? I wanna hear about them in the comments down below. I will respond to as many as I can, but I do read them all. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Again, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I'm Sal from the Destinations channel, and I'll see you very soon up on the Lido deck.